Hi, it's Greg Harrell here with another Vim screencast. And tonight I want to talk about my experiences uh, porting a Vimscript plugin to Lua. Now, I am not a Lua expert. Um, I've written probably a couple thousand lines over a number of years uh, and not any number of lines lately. Uh, but nevertheless, I wanted to try this out because I wanted to see how much faster I could make a plugin by porting bits of it to Lua. Um, and so just to set the scene a little bit, um, the plugin in question is Corpus, uh, which is a note management plugin. Uh, what you can see here on the top is uh, the old version of the plugin uh, written in, in the script. And as you can see, uh, it basically consists of a bunch of auto-loaded functions. So for example, when the command line changes here, we will call the Corpus command line changed auto function. I um, mean, if you look uh, down here, you'll see the Lua version uh, basically just requires the Corpus Lua module and calls a function in that. So this is a straight port. Uh, I haven't really, I haven't changed the names of any of the functions. I haven't tried to do anything clever. It's just a one-to-one -one port um, with a view to being able to compare the speed. Um, and the results have been really pleasing. They've uh, far exceeded my expectations. Um, I would have thought that uh, it might be a little bit faster and then with some careful optimization, I might be able to make it pretty good, but just this dumb port has actually made it massively better. Um, so just to kind of set a baseline here, I'm gonna show you what Corpus used to look like. Um, so I've got it running here. Um, this is an Electron app that I wrote. It's basically a clone of the NV Alt application, which is a great little note-taking application for Mac. Um, and I wanted to add some features to it and I wanted to just hack on things, so I decided to rewrite it from scratch. Um, and so it's written in JavaScript. Um, and what we're looking at now is uh, a list of about two and a half thousand articles from my personal wiki, uh, which is on my website at wincent.com. So quite a few uh, articles here. And just to give you a sense of the speed, um, you'll notice as I scroll through this, it, uh, you'll see some gaps in the listing that then fill in. That's because we're using a fairly typical trick here of not rendering all 2,500 items in this list. We render just enough to fill the visible part of the viewport or the visible part of the column with a little bit above and below. So if I scroll really fast, um, you'll see uh, that there are gaps where we haven't rendered anything yet. And then as we catch up, we actually fill in those gaps. If you scroll slowly, you don't see any problems at all. Uh, so just to show you how fast moving between files is, um, if I hit Command J, um, I can skip between the files. And if I hold it down, um, you'll see that's how fast it moves. At the moment, my machine is very loaded because I'm recording the screen, uh, which is why you can probably also maybe hear the fan in the background. So in real life, instead of updating you know, some small, you know, single digit number of times per second, um, you can get slightly better performance. Um, so this was, pretty snappy for that, I guess. And the other thing you can do is search. So for example, if I type in some random words here, you'll see it filters the list down to show me articles that contain those words. Um, and the way this is doing it, um, as I said, it's written in JavaScript, it's just a brute force search. So it loads all of the articles, that's all 2,500 articles into memory, and then just does this brute force scan through the whole lot. And JavaScript is fast enough that you can do that. Uh, and if the machine weren't loaded, you'd see that this is uh, relatively responsive. It's just a little bit slower because uh, of the load I'm putting on the machine. So that's what Corpus used to look like. Um, however, I got sick of writing in an Electron app when I could be writing in Vim. So I made a Vim plugin for it. And the first thing I'm gonna do now is just to give you a sense of the speed, show you how fast the old version was that was written in Vim script. So when I hit the binding, hopefully you saw two things there. One is the preview pane uh, on the right, which shows the content of an article. And then there's the thing on the left, which is the list of articles I could select. They didn't appear, like they appear slowly enough that you can see first the left side, then the right side paint, which is not ideal. I mean, ideally it would be instantaneous and you wouldn't be watching the screen paint, which is a terrible thing to do on a computer that can do supposedly billions of things every second. And um, so as I move down, I'm, I'm hitting control J here. Um, you'll see it's debounced. So only when I stop moving the key did it actually update the preview. So I can I can move through this list fairly fast, but it's only going to update the one on the left uh, uh, when I stop moving. 
The other thing I can do is search. So just say I wanted to find an article with words. Same thing there, it's a little bit sluggish with the load of the machine. Um, what this is doing here is um, it's actually calling git grep because all of the notes are in a git repo. So instead of scanning through memory, like the JavaScript version did, this is just shelling out to git and saying, you know, show me articles with these words. Um, so that's the old version. Now let's switch to the new version. Um, the first thing you notice is it appeared instantly, which is great. So you know, Lou is faster at painting the screen. Um, and then I'm going to hold down Control J again just to show you how quickly I can move through this list. Now, hopefully in the screencast, the quality is sufficient that you can see that the left side, despite the load of the machine is under, is scrolling pretty smoothly, or it was anyway. Um, and the loading of the previews is instantaneous. So basically when I implemented this, um, I saw it was so fast that I could get rid of the debouncing that I had. Um, and likewise, I could do searching. So search for random words. This is also quite, um, it's a little bit slow, uh, but I can assure you that, that is only because I'm, you know, the fans are roaring. Sounds like a hairdryer. Um, so the machine's quite loaded. Look, I'm not lying for some reason. I think it got hot, right? So that's what that red spike is. The kernel idle task trying to cool the machine off, which is when the, the scrolling got laggy. Uh, but basically this is fast now. Um, and it's fast because of Lua. Uh, and so that's great. Uh, so now let's just look at the code. Um, I don't aim this to be a Lua tutorial, but just to give you a sense of how different things are between a VimScript version and a non-VimScript version. Um, so if, whoops, if we go to the auto load directory, you'll see that originally this file here, the old version of it was nearly 900 lines long. Um, and if we compare that to the auto load directory, whoops, the auto load directory now, there still is an auto load file, but now it's 500 lines. Um, and the reason why it's still got a bunch of stuff in it is because there's stuff in here that I haven't ported yet. Um, and I haven't ported it because this is not the performance critical part. So for example, there are functions in here to do things like, you know, give me a binding I can hit to insert a link to another document or to jump to another document. Um, and all of that stuff doesn't need to be fast. So let's look at the, uh, the Lua bits. So here we've got 600 lines of Lua now. This is the bit that actually needs to be fast. Um, and it's mostly responsible for uh, searching the Git repo, uh, listing files, moving up and down the list, rendering the preview. Um, so you can see some of the function names here. Let's just, why don't we just compare a function just to see how different they are. So uh, we can look at say um, the preview function itself. It seems like a good one. So here's preview in the Lua version. Um, and it might be helpful to get the same thing up here. It's a pre preview. So first of all, um, one thing to notice is that the, there it is, preview. Um, because the old one had debouncing in it, there's a little bit of craft in here related to that. That's not in the new version, but basically um, you can see we're calling nvim APIs here, like in nvim buff get lines. Um, and if you look down here somewhere, what even am I looking at? Preview. Why is this different? It's been, a, it's been whole days since I ported this, so I'm just trying to see why is this not exactly the same as the other one. Maybe I just move those lines around. So we get the lines from the buffer, the buffer on the left, that's how we, and we read the file name out of there. We strip the MD off it, and that's how we know which file we're going to render on the right. If we haven't already created the buffer for the right, we create one, we create a window, set it up, and we read the file and we show the lines. So that's what that one looks like. And then we, we redraw at the end there. Whereas this one, um, oh, I see what I did. I extracted some common functionality out into a get selected file method that's here. Um, but as you can see, it does exactly the same thing. It's calling nvim buff get lines, trimming off the MD and returning it. Um, so we were down here. Uh, and once again, we do exactly the same thing. We're calling, uh, we're creating a preview buffer if one doesn't exist using the nvm create buff call. This is exactly the same as we were doing in the Vim script version, passing the same parameters. Um, and likewise, uh, you know, we're calling nvim get option to get the lines, whereas here we just did uh, ampersand lines, uh, but it's the same, same, we're accessing the same information. Um, and once again, we call nvim open open win here to create the window if we haven't already got it. And um, we set some options on it to make it look nice, which is why 
this one looks very dull um, whereas with the new one I've like set some win highlight overrides to make it look a bit better uh, but uh, that obviously doesn't take long and then finally we're reading the file so once again vim.fn.readfile it's literally the same call as we were doing here on this line um, it's calling the same underlying C code in the vim uh, process um, and we're even doing a little bit more work in the Lua version because we're padding the length of the line so that when I do a highlight um, if you apply a, a highlight to a line that only goes to a certain column the highlight would stop there so basically all of this stuff to the right is just spaces so that I can draw a line across the whole thing so this thing is doing more work um, and then we set the lines and then we tell Vim to redraw. So if you look through the the, uh, the new version of the plugin, you'll see it is very much a one-to-one -one port in that way, where I'm calling the same API functions, the structure is basically the same, and the only thing I've done is remove the debouncing because I don't need it anymore. Um, the other thing I've done uh, is I've made the search process asynchronous. Um, so I, I'm now going to show you that run. Dot you know, there's a fairly l where is here it is. Um, there's a fairly low level uh, lib uv uh, integration in NeoVim that does a lot of I/O stuff, um, and so that's exposed as vim.loop. So basically, I just made this low level runner function that uh, you know spawns a process and gathers the output and calls a callback when it's done. So using that. I was uh, able to switch this search function, which is just calling git grep, um, to behave asynchronously, um, which means that typing a search query is a little bit more responsive too. But other than that wrapping in an async function, if you actually look at what's being done in here, uh, it's exactly the same. It's calling git and then it's pulling apart the um, pulling apart the results that come back from git and I'm using them to fill the list on the left. Um, so as I said, you could look through this and you'd see that Everything is basically a one-to-one -one port. There are some things that are different, like obviously uh, Vim regular expressions are strange. Um, Lua doesn't even have regular expressions. And there is some function that you can call in the API to turn a Vim regex into a Lua pattern, but I don't need it to be that dynamic. So uh, I just wrote the patterns by hand. Um, what's a good, I mean, if I search for percent, you'll see some examples here. There's some. Even though they're not full regular expressions, they are very similar. Um, so these uh, percent escapes uh, will be familiar to you if you've written regexes. So for example, percent %s stands for white space. Um, if you invert the case and make it a capital S, it means any non-white space. Um, there's no word boundary thing like backslash b, but there are these so-called frontier markers. So percent %f means the frontier where a certain uh, string starts matching. So in this case, we're looking for the word, we're looking for an anchored match at the start of the line, followed by optional white space, followed by the word corpus. Um, and then we're matching a frontier where non-word characters start matching. So that's basically another way to write a web word boundary marker. Um, and then here, um, very similar to the Vim regular expression syntax, this is a non-greedy match. Um, what's some other interesting one? I thought this one was interesting. Well, maybe not that interesting. Uh, but to match a null byte, you use percent %z. So this basically says, you know, of all the chunks of I/O that I got, we're going to iterate over them and um, we're going to pull out matches. We're basically, going to look for some run of non-null characters followed by a null character if there is one, and we use those to basically pull the file names out of the output. Um, so in short, I think that's all. I will probably be talking a little bit more about Lua on other occasions, but just for now, I uh, wanted to say that it seems like a really promising direction to go in. And uh, at this point, my enthusiasm for reporting Vim script to Vim script version nine is negative. It's not even zero, because <laughs> I feel like this is the future. Um, so thanks for watching and I will see you again next time.